Good evening, Booktube. This is Johnny. It is a Sunday night here in West Michigan. It is going on 9.36 in the evening. Uh, we're in the midst of a severe thunderstorm. And um, I thought I'd make a video because tomorrow night our daughter should be here with her family from Denver. And I don't think I'll be able to make a video at least for a couple of days. Uh, I was, I've been thinking about something um, about this video and it goes back to reading. I've been mentioning I bought uh, this new uh, two volume work, The Devil's Redemption, A New History and Interpretation of Christian Universalism by Michael J. McClam, uh, Clamman, uh, and when I see that name, Michael J. McClamman, Mon, I think of his other books. I have other books by him in our library that I've had for a long time, and and so I thought I'd do a video because. If you're going to do videos in Booktube, you should talk about books and things that you know something about and uh, or something that a writer or books or that you have been blessed by or have enjoyed or has had an impact in your life. And one of the the people, one of the Christians in my life who's had an impact is Jonathan Edwards, who was the 18th century uh, minister, uh, theologian, missionary, philosopher, a contemplative. Uh, I know that people out there who have gone to college have heard about Jonathan Edwards. Many years ago when I was in junior college, back in my early 20s, I took a class on American literature. And as you're going through American literature, you have these anthologies. And one of the the things in the American literature anthology was excerpts from Jonathan Edwards' sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And I remember sitting in that class and and people around me that were not Christians, as far as I know, and they weren't Calvinists, and they had not read the whole works of Jonathan Edwards. And I'm not saying I have either. I've read probably more than most people who are sitting in an American literary class in some junior college and in Northern California. And when we're going through the sermon, I people are saying, you know, the, the, the teacher was saying, this is Calvinism. And I rose my hand and said, I'm a Calvinist. And he kind of looked at me and said, you know, and so I kind of, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I had said I had read Jonathan Edwards and Jonathan Edwards preached many sermons besides sinners in the hands of an angry God. And that it was just being uh, not fair to Jonathan Edwards just looking at one sermon. I mean, he preached thousands of sermons. Uh, if you go to, you know, here I have just, these are the, the, the works of Jonathan Edwards published by Banner Truth. And there are sermons in here by Jonathan Edwards, but he wrote many things uh, besides, you know, he, in his works you have many, th th he wrote many treatises on f free will, the end of creation, you know, he wrote on revival, what is true spiritual revival, and all kinds of things. And one of my favorite books, uh, a while back, a booktuber said, mention 
10 books that you have to have in, in your library. If, if, if you had to choose 10 books, which would they be? And one of them I mentioned was Jonathan Edwards' Religious Affections. Now, Religious Affections is, is in the works of Jonathan Edwards, published by Banner Truth. Now, if you look at this edition, it has really small print. But, and so I bought this Banner Truth edition. So I bought this many years ago. My edition came out in 1986. And I probably bought this when I was, I can't remember. I might have had another edition of this, but this one I, I've read many times. I have it marked up. And one of the premises of Jonathan Edwards, well, going back to Jonathan Edwards' will and about uh, Michael J. McClemon, he wrote this book, Encounters with God, an Approach to the Theology of Jonathan Edwards by Michael J. McClemon. And he also wrote this big, well, he co-wrote it, this book, the Theology of Jonathan Edwards by Michael J. McClemon and Gerard R. McDermott Mott. So he wrote these books on Jonathan Edwards and I got those out because every time I look at this book I think of these books because I have a huge Jonathan Edwards collection of books about Jonathan Edwards, biographies, uh, studies of the th theology and philosophy of Jonathan Edwards, and historical books about uh, the, the First Great Awakening there in the colonies, uh, things like that. Uh, those who watch my videos know it. I'm into the history of Christianity in America, uh, uh, colonialism, uh, the second, the first and second Great Awakening, oh, the time of the Transcendentalist movement, uh, after the Civil War, and going into the Reconstruction and the Gilded Age and you know, all those different periods of American history and looking at how Christianity was seen or expressed or manifested itself among those who profess to be Christians, Baptists, Methodists, Charismatics, Pentecostals, Catholics, uh, you know, all kinds of denominations and Christian spiritual traditions in America, Quakerism, this goes on and on, uh, Shaker movements, you know, Etopian movements, you know, all those kinds of things. So Jonathan Edwards is a towering figure in American uh, church history. Um, in, in the circles that my wife and I are in as Christians. Jonathan Edwards is known and read, and uh, you find his sermons and his works in ministers' libraries and some lay people's libraries. Uh, uh, th there is, I have, I used to hand out this booklet to people one of my favorite Jonathan Edwards sermons is called Safety, Fullness, and Sweet Refreshment in Christ by Jonathan Edwards. This is a sermon that um, was published by International Outreach, which uh, has published books on the theology of Jonathan Edwards, which I could show you in a video, but I could be here for hours talking about Jonathan Edwards and showing books and reading from his sermons and his writings and and I don't want to do that because 
I think my general my general audience in BookTube is secular, and they are not interested in American Christianity and Jonathan Edwards and the first the first Great Awakening and Second Great Awakening. But I thought I would just read a little bit. Well, one thing I want to the reason why I'm bringing all this up is because I've mentioned in my videos about spiritual perception, spiritual illumination, being enlightened by the Holy Spirit. And you find that that not only is that a, a biblical, but all Christian spiritual writers talk about it, especially Jonathan Edwards. And I thought I'd just read, for example, I, I just opened this up this evening and before I made this video and I came across this. He says, uh, From these things is evident that those gracious influences which the saint are, saints are subject of and the effects of God's Spirit which they experience are entirely above nature, altogether of a different kind from anything that men find within themselves by nature, or only in the exercise of natural principles and are things which no improvements of those qualifications or principles that are natural, no advancing, advancing or exalting them to a higher degree and no kind of composition of them will ever bring men to because they are not only different from that which is natural and from everything that natural men experience in degree and circumstances but also in kind and of a nature vastly more excellent. And this is what I mean by supernatural. When I say that gracious affections are from the influences that are supernatural, from hence it follows that in those gracious exercises and affections which are wrought in the minds of the saints through the saving influence of the Spirit of God, there is a new inward perception or sensation of their minds. See, you, me you remember I mentioned last night uh, with I sense within myself spiritual longings, the leaping out of the heart. I'm talking about those gracious of influences of the Holy Spirit. There is a new inward perception. There, as we were going through the Gospels, the four Gospels, we talked. We were going through the Gospel of John. And Jesus talks about the giving of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit would give us, would open up our blind eyes and that we would see His glory, the glory of the cross, the glory of Christ. And that's what Edwards talks about, this perception or sensation of their minds entirely different in its nature and kind from anything that ever their minds were the subjects of before they were sanctified. For doubtless, if God by his mighty power produces something that is new, not only in degree and circumstances, but in whole, its whole nature, in which cannot be produced by any, by any exalting or varying or compounding of what was there before, or by adding anything of the kind. I say, if God produces something thus new in a mind that is a perceiving, thinking, conscious thing, then doubtless something something entirely new is felt or perceived or thought or which is the same thing there is some new sensation or perception of the mind which is entirely of a new sort and could not be produced by any exalting varying or compounding of the kind of perceptions or sensations which the mind had before or there is what some metaphysics metaphysicians metaphysics <laughs> A meadow physicians, you know, like a uh, what's the word? Uh, physicians, metaphysicians call a new simple idea. If grace be in the sense above describe an entirely new kind of principle, then the exercise of it are entirely a new kind of exercises. If there be in the soul a new sort of exercises which it is conscious of which the soul knew nothing of before, and which no improvement, composition, or management of what it was before conscious or sensible could produce anything like it, then it follows that the mind 
has an entirely new kind of perception or sensation, which is, as it were, a new spiritual sense. A new spiritual sense that the mind has, or a principle of a new kind of perception or spiritual sensation. And that's why I'm talking about when Edwards is saying that a Christian is given by the work of God a new sensation, a, a new perception that was not there in his natural condition before he was born again, regenerated. Remember we read in the Gospel of John about being born again, what is born of the flesh is flesh and what is the spirit is spirit. Well, when we're born of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, we're given a new sensation. We're given a new perception. The mind has entirely a new kind of perception or sensation. And here it is, as it were, a new spiritual sense that the mind has, or principle of a new kind of perception or, or per, sp, spiritual sensation, which is its whole nature different from any from any other senses, and something is perceived by a true saint in the exercise of this new sense of mind and spiritual and divine things. So you can't see spiritual and divine things without that new perception that implanted in us by the work of the Holy Spirit. So, and you'll never see that in Christ is safety and fullness and sweetness that you'll never see unless the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual perception the refreshment that's in Christ, the, the, how satisfying Christ is, and how fulfilling He is. And that's why I always find it kind of crazy that in BookTube, when I get comments, that people say, you know, forsake Christianity, that Christianity is just a figment of man's imagination, and that Christianity is just a product of human uh, religion evolution, or something like that. It's just made up by man, and and it's all just a, it's just a bunch of fables, and it's not true, and it, the Bible is just a, you know all these different things, and yet here I am, I have been blessed by the grace of God to having a spiritual perception of the glory and the beauty of Christ, seeing in Him that He of His, of his infinite fullness seeing in Him that He is all-satisfying, seeing in Christ that He is all-sufficient. And why should I, why should I forsake... See, Christianity is not just some kind of religious practice. Christianity, is, as I have always raised our children, is a relationship. Being a Christian is following Jesus. Being a Christian is knowing Jesus Christ, not just some intellectual thing in your head, but with affections religious affections and the, the primacy is, is that it's what in our circus called uh, heart religion that not only true Christian doctrine should inflame our hearts with love true Christian doctrine should cause us to fall deeper in love with God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit true biblical preaching and teaching causes us to want to live a life of service and thankfulness and gratitude to God. And uh, if it doesn't do that, then it's just a bunch of empty notions inside your head. It's just a bunch of speculation, a bunch of just head knowledge. And uh, true knowledge of God has a sensation. It, it causes religious affections. Uh, he says here, so that the spiritual perception which a sanctified and spiritual person has are not only diverse from all the natural men have, after the manner that the idea or perceptions of the sense, same sense may differ from one another, but rather as the ideas and sensations differ, senses so differ. Hence the work of the Spirit of God in regeneration is often compared to the giving of a new sense, giving eyes to see and ears to hear unstopping the ears of the death, opening the eyes of them that, that were born blind, turning them, turning from darkness into light. And because the spiritual sense is immediately, immensely the most noble and excellent, and that without which, no, which all other principles or perceptions 
and our faculties are useless in vain. Therefore, the giving this new sense with the blessed fruits and effects of it in the soul is compared to a raising the dead and a new creation. See, when a person is born again, as we read there in the night in the Gospel of John, he becomes a new creation. Old things pass away, all things become new. He is he was once spiritually dead. Now he has been raised from the dead. We have been spiritually raised from the dead. And therefore, because we're new creations, that we've been raised from a spiritual death, we have a new perception, new, new affections. We see things. We hear things. As he says here, uh, the Spirit of God and regeneration is often in Scripture compared to the giving a new sense giving eyes to see and ears to hear. See, you can't see the glory of the gospel until the Holy Spirit opens your eyes. You can't hear the sweetness of the gospel being preached and taught. You can't hear the sweetness of God's word in Scripture unless the, the Holy Spirit opens up your deaf ears to hear. And uh, so to me, the, I, I'm not surprised when people comment and book to what they say about Christianity, that they're atheists, or they find being a Christian a foolish thing. And one thing else is that being a Christian, you're not, uh, so I think sometimes people think that being a Christian is that you got to be a crowd pleaser. That being a Christian is that you're supposed to go along with what our, our culture says is ethically right. Well, the Bible says, and the Word of God has always said, the people of God will always be hated and persecuted. Because people outside of Christ, who don't have, are not born again, they're in darkness. And therefore, they hate the light. They don't want nothing to do with God. And so they're going to... And the Bible talks about idolaters. The Bible talks about the children of darkness. The Bible talks about those who have rejected Christ and and gone the way of sin and rebellion. And they hate they hate the light. They hate those who stand up and try to live according to what pleases God. Uh, because they have seen by the work of the Holy Spirit that Jesus and all that he has said and done was out of divine love. And that he wants us to enter into fellowship with the triune God, to have an intimate relationship with God, to, to participate in the life of God, and uh, which is eternal joy and love and peace and and what is reality? What is reality? I mean, reality is is God. Reality is Jesus Christ. Reality is fellowship with God. Everything else is just. It's just something else. So when I uh, I look at uh, the Devil's Redemption by Michael J. McLemon, I think of his books, the theology of Jonathan Edwards and Encounters with God, the approach to the theology of Jonathan Edwards. He has in here even uh, uh, there is a a chapter, the spiritual perception in Jonathan Edwards. I just read that tonight. So I just thought I'd share these thoughts. Jonathan Edwards was the, one of the first things that I, 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 when I first got into reading the 17th century English Puritans, uh, and I was involved in the, in the Banner of Truth, which reprints these works. I bought, when I was really, in my, I think I was around 23. Uh, I got some money, which is a long story, and I went to Berkeley, California, and I bought the works of Jonathan Edwards, and I was living out in the woods, and I was living in a little tiny shack, and I was, back in those days, I was sick with my ulcers, and I couldn't sleep at night, and I was always awake at night, and I would read Jonathan Edwards by, by uh, candlelight, and I had a beat-up old set, it was all had wax on it and rain stains and teared book cover. But when I was in Bible college, I knew this guy, he was a, a Vietnam vet. 
and he wanted a set of Jonathan Edwards. And I said, why? Well, you know, I wanted to buy a new set. A set, but my set was all beat up and it was in bad shape. And he, he said, I want it. So he bought it. I don't know how much he, he paid for it. Maybe, you know, $20. And then I went out and bought myself a new set. I bought those almost... Well, I've been reading Jonathan Edwards for... 40 years. <laughs> and, uh... But Religious Affections by Jonathan Edwards is one of my top 10 books. And, uh... You can't go wrong reading Jonathan Edwards. Especially his sermons. Some of his things are very philosophical and very hard to read, but... Really read Religious Affections by Jonathan Edwards. Read some of his sermons, Safety, Fullness, and Sweet Refreshment in Christ by Jonathan Edwards. If you really get into a good uh, study of Jonathan Edwards, it's Theology of Jonathan Edwards by Michael J. McClellan and Jared R. DeMote. So I just thought I'd share that. This will probably be my last video tomorrow night, hopefully. A daughter will be here with her husband Andy and Louisa, Margaret, and Jack. And till next time, uh, thank you for the comments. Thank you for those who stick around. And until next time, bye.